Hello everyone, I'm Rick Jansen. Welcome to my fly tying channel. You know, often when I look at the recipes for flies presented in books, magazines, or on YouTube, I don't always have all the right materials on hand. So improvisation becomes part of the game. Plan B or even Plan C. Today's fly is a version of Brian Chan's very popular ASB wine coronamid. In this recipe, I've replaced almost everything except the hook. And I think I've come up with a pretty reasonable facsimile. So let's take a look at the materials I use to tie this very popular fly. Just before we get started, I want to throw this challenge out there at uh, how many different materials can you use to tie this fly and get the same result. Now out of the seven materials, I re replaced four of them. <laughs> There's, uh, I kept the hook, the bead, and the fine copper wire. I've replaced the gills, the underbody, the thread, and the overbody. I'm sure there's at least a dozen more materials that can be used to tie this fly. Flashaboos, Caroni skins, um, other combinations, tinsels, you name it. So I'd love to hear about it in your comments. What have you used to tie this fly? Even if you've only replaced one material. But uh, it would be interesting to see. It would be a fun dialogue and challenge to see how many people can tie the same fly with different materials. Now I'm coming in here to tie in my gills. I'm using my burnt orange tying thread. The burnt orange is really important for a couple of reasons. I like the collar it makes that replicate the wing buds, but also uh, it was essential to the color of the underbody with the uh, buzzer wrap on top of it to produce the rich maroon color I was looking for. Now I'm using um, white ostrich roll for my gills. There's a nice benefit to using ostrich roll is that once you've tied it in place and uh, whip finished it, it and uh, remove the excess you don't have to trim it to length it simply is the right length right from the get-go now i'm just having a little trouble doing the pinch and loop method my hands are a bit dry this morning and a bit uh, rough like sandpaper so i'm trying to get that secured in place dry weather around here these days we'll get that tag end cut off and then we're going to uh, wrap our ostrich roll around. I usually do about three wraps to get the right number of gills, the bushy looking of gills there that I'm looking for. And we'll get that secured in place. Brian used a uh, Unistretch white floss and so I've gone with the uh, ostrich roll because I like the benefit of not having to, to cut it to length afterwards and it's it's not as straggly as the yarn can be at times. Uh, leaving straggles all over the place. Maybe it's just the kind of yarn I use. Get that uh, whip finished and tied off there and cut. And then as I move the bead forward, you see it just naturally pushes those gills forward into the perfect length. Don't have to do anything else with them. Reattach your tying thread. And uh, get our first rib in there. And that's a fine or a super extra small copper wire. That I couldn't replace. Uh, there's nothing else that looks like it. And it matches up so well with the burnt orange thread that I decided that uh, it was the only way to go on this particular pattern with everything else I was using on this pattern to bring it up. So there we go. Now I get that secured down my side of the hook, covering the shank of the hook with the burnt orange thread. Um, it's, uh, yeah, like I said, this, this color of the thread was really important because when you put the buzzer wrap on top of it, it produces exactly the color I was looking for. Okay. Now I'm using a window tint, uh, 0.75 mil 
uh, of the 20% window tint. This comes from a little company in Prince George, and I forgot the name of them. They were advertising on social media, and I decided to order a few sheets of the natural and some colors. And uh, excellent little company, very reasonable price for their window tint, pre-cut to different uh, thicknesses. So it's 0.75 I'm using, but it comes as small as 0.5 and as wide as one millimeter. And uh, so I'm using the 0.75 for this hook. I'm using a number 10 Togan's scud hook in here, but of course you can tie this smaller. Um, Part, part of the reason for using the hook this size is, you know, you see pupa that size, but also for the videography, it just shows up better on the camera. So that, in next comes the buzzer wrap in medium claret. And that's what gives us our rich maroon color when you put it on top of this, this thread. So I'm using two strands of that. I'll bring it in here. Cut to length. And, uh, it's a very thin and uh, transparent material. And I want to get just the right amount of tag in there, so I'm just adjusting the length there. Now I give that a, a pinch and wrap. Pull it down. And get the thread down to the wire and the window tint. And get it right down there into the bend of the hook. And then come back forward. I'm covering everything up with the burnt orange thread. Trying to get, whoop, don't want to get that buzzer wrap all tangled in the thread there. Keep that free of it. Trying to build up a decently smooth underbody that will give us the right taper for lying the, uh, the buzzer wrap and the window tint on. Nice even touching wraps. And there we go. Now we're going to build up a bit of a shoulder here. Lock that bead forward. I come back all the way to the point of the hook, about even with the point there, and then come back forward again, and then back about halfway to the point, and then back forward again, and test it. Make sure that bead is locked in place. Great. Now I'll take the wind, the uh, buzzer wrap, and sort out those two strands of buzzer wrap and got them in my hand here and I pull the window tint and the wire forward and I lay a couple of wraps in behind to give it a tag. Uh, Don Fresky calls this a cheater tag. You're not cheating Don, it's just a tag. If you happen to see this, not that I have anything to teach you, but uh, might relieve you of your guilt of feeling you might be cheating on something. <laughs> and now I pull the wire and the window tint back again and continue the wraps of my medium claret buzzer wrap. And you can see that rich burgundy color that's coming out here now by coloring that burnt orange thread with this buzzer wrap. And I want it completely wrapping and completely covering it. So I don't mind overlaps. It's a thin material. Um, you're not going to compromise the taper of your fly by wrapping multiple layers of it. I'm just loving that rich burgundy maroon color that that uh, Brian says is so prominent in many of the flies when they're in the chromy stage. Brown to burgundy to red. And we'll give that, get, secure that in place and give it a snip. Right on close, up close there. Personal. And now we bring our window tint forward. Oh, still got some buzzer wrap stuck on me there. Now our window tint, and I try to get five wraps of it in there. So one, two, three, whoop, three, that slippery material underneath, four, five. Bring it up the near side and secure that in place. And our wire wants to get tangled in there. Get that well secured into place there. And you can see how that burgundy or maroon shows up really nicely underneath the window tint there. Give that a little snip up close. And then our copper wire. 
And we're going to follow that. We're going to go right in front of the window tint just to give it that second rib. And it matches the, uh, matches the burned orange really nice. It's a color coordinated fly. But again, like I think there must be at least a dozen, maybe 15 different combinations, maybe given, given the possible combinations of permutations are probably endless, but uh, probably about 15 different materials you could tie this fly with in different ways to put it together and get this basically the same result. So please put that in your comments. What else? Try this, try this fly with uh, different materials you've got. You don't always have to have exactly the right materials to produce the fly that you're looking for. And, uh, and to get the result you want, especially the result on the water. If it looks good, looks close to the natural, it's going to work. And I think this one looks really close to Brian's model. So now we'll give that a whip finish. And then the, uh, the resin comes in to finish the fly. You know, give that a, a nice tug there to make sure it's secure. We draw a drop of the UV clear fly finish and flow to uh, give it durability. And also it slightly changes the color of the burnt orange thread. It, it, it darkens it up a little bit, which is just the thing I'm looking for. And I'm looking for my bodkin actually right now. I seems to, oh, there it is, misplaced it. I'm going to move that resin around, spread it around bottom and top give that a pop with UV light and there you have it Brian's ASB wine chronomatide without ASB or wine thread dandy fly great looking chromey to be fished under an indicator or hung um, suspended on a sinking line dangled under the boat great fly. I'm just going to give it a second coat just to smooth it out a little bit, just a half a drop more. And uh, we've got ourselves one Danny fly. So please give me comments. Does this work for you? This combination of materials? Have you been able to do better? I'm sure many of you have. Um, I'm not saying better than Brian, but better than mine. <laughs> so give that another flash and I see I've got a little drip there that I want to move out of the way it's a little bit too much on the bottom and there we go if you like this uh, challenge if you like this chronomet this video please consider subscribing to my channel and if you want to share this with your friends I invite you to do so